So today I'm going to talk about logarithms in the sense that they're sort of an inverse of the an exponential relationship. In a way, you can think of it sort of as the darkest timeline version of uh, an exponent. So when I have an exponential relationship, I may say that it's y equals b to the x, or a lot of times you'll see this sort of thing, which basically means that you're starting out right here in this area, and then from there you're the x is the exponent that you're adding. So as you increase going to the right on the graph, so this sort of thing, it starts out real slow here at the bottom and all of a sudden it sort of shoots up. That's what it looks like. Now, if I wanted to look at a logarithm as a true inverse to that, I would make my changeover x equals b to the y power, which is this really weird uh, sort of setup that you wouldn't want to see normally. So instead of doing that, they sort of changed it around a little bit how it looks because we like to have that y equals sort of feel to it to give it a, a graphic sense so they decided to use the term log and what most likely happened uh, just FYI is that things were being done with these concepts in different parts of the world so they sort of changed how they organized them a little bit but really you deal with uh, instead of having y uh, x equals b to the y power when you flip it all around it's easier just to write it y equals log of b to the x. So really what we're looking at is just a change. Uh, visually speaking, by the way, instead of doing up like this, as a true inverse that'll sort of um, do this. And I'll see if I can get it to do it without totally uh, ruining everything and being you know, terrible and awful. So instead of going up, it just sort of goes over like this. That's kind of the overall look that you're looking for. It's not the greatest design I've ever done, but uh, you know, whatever it is it is. So from here, where do we go with it? What does it look like? And this will, by the way, continue down, possibly, for an ever, ever, and on. Um, uh, as far as that goes, where do we go with it? Well, we go to evaluating it, and what, you, what that looks like is I want to do a little bit of a change up. So I'm just changing it from one term to another. So writing exponential functions in logarithmic form is kind of the way they go about it. So what they want you to do is just rethink your conception of how the numbers are written. So I know that 100 is equal to 10 to the second power, but if you could see earlier, all they do with the log is they say, okay, instead of the base being b, it's actually just down here, and then the x power is what it ends up uh, sort of becoming. So let's flip on over here. So 100 equals 10 to the second power. Well, I'm going to put log here, and my base would just be right down here. And the statement set up, sorry about that, would be 100. So this is saying, if I have 10 as my base, what do I have to raise it to to get to the 100? Well, of course, the answer is 2. And that's the setup. It just says, what do I have to raise this to to get this? And that's what you're telling them. You're almost just naming the exponent for them. In this section, it says 81 is equal to 3 to the fourth power. So we're just going to say, so the log of 3 going up to 81 takes you how many? 4. Similar, uh, 1 equals 5 to the 0 power. A log, or the log of 5, I want to just go up to 1. Would I have to raise 5 to to get to 1? Well, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So that would look very common. Anytime you have that equals to 1 thing, uh, you're probably raising it to the 0 power, unless it's 1 and you're raising it to the first power, of course. So from here, it goes to, well, what happens if it's not so clean and nice and pretty? Occasionally, it doesn't work out all nice. Rarely. In fact, does it particularly work out nicely? In this case, we're going to start looking at solving them um, Almost, uh, setting up an equation so we can sort of solve them. So I'm going to look at the log of 8 equals 32, but I'm going to look at it in another way. I'm going to say, okay, <clears throat> the log of 8 to 32 is equal to x. And I want to know what that's going to be. Well, I know that 32 is the point I'm trying to get to, and I'm trying to raise 8 to something to get there. That's my goal. What I have to do is sort of reconceptualize what 32 means and what it represents, and to see if they can get a common base to build on an exponent. Well, I know, for instance, that if I raise 2 to the 5th power, it gives me 32. So I'm going to write 2 to the 5th power right here. The reason I'm going to do that is because I know that 2 to the 3rd power is equal to 8. So I'm going to write 2 to the 3rd power, and then I'm just going to pop like a little bit of a x on the outside. Now you'll start to see, well, 
okay, so they have a common base. What can I do with that? I can actually pull the exponents down, so it becomes 5 is equal to 3x, and then I just solve it. Divide by 3 on both sides. x is equal to 5 thirds. And that's it. That's all you want to do. So that's if you're asked to uh, find uh, what is the value of it? Well, the value of it, x, is equal to 5 thirds. So what I would say is if I rose 8 to the 5 thirds power, 5 thirds power, I'd get 32. Similar here. I'm just going to reorganize it a little bit. I have to raise 4 to something, and then, so this is equal to x, of course. I have to raise 4 to something to equal 32. So you sort of have to start thinking in your head, well, what can make 4 and what can make 32 as far as uh, raising it to powers? Well, once again, I can just do 2 to the 5th here, and then 2 to the 2nd. Pop the x out there. Um, the nice thing is they have the same base now, so I could just say 5 is equal to 2 to the x, uh, sorry, 2x. I don't know why I've tried to make it an exponent. So I just solve it, divide by 2. x is equal to 5 over 2, which means if you raise 4 to the 5 over 2 power, and you're welcome to try that if you want, it's pretty easy in most calculators to just type it in, you can see that it does give you 32, and that works. Now the next one is kind of a beast. The log 64 gives uh, of 1 32nd is equal to x. So I want to know, what can I raise, or yeah, what can I raise 64 to to give me 1 32nd? It's a very strange problem, and the reality is it probably means you're going to use negative exponents. So once again, I'm going to go back to the well here and drill out the 2 as my base, because 2 to the 6th power is 64. One over thirty-two, since uh, thirty-two is two to the fifth power. I'm going to guess it's two to the negative fifth power, and it is. So that's good. Just thinking in, in my head now. Two to the negative five. It's a bad thing to do when you make videos. Just think in your head. Anyway, so from here, now that I have a common base, I can just eliminate those, and it becomes six x equals negative five. Divide by six on both sides and x is equal to negative 5 over 6. So what it really means is that if I raise 64 to the negative 5 sixth power, because that's going to happen so many times in your life, you'd be shocked unless you're... I mean, if you're shocked by the obvious anyway, that it's never going to happen. Um, there it is then I'd end up with the 1 over 32 that I was looking for before. So that's it. Logarithms really aren't that complicated. It's just the idea that they're sort of rewriting exponents in a new fa in a newfangled way. Uh, the graph looks a little bit different because of the inverse nature of how they're set up. But other than that, evaluating them really isn't that complicated. Just set it up, set them equal, try to find a common base, and solve it out. Good to go.